in this session i will be sharing with you that uh, how these norms and standards help us in uh, our integrated and uh, coordinated uh, manner the development of our technical education because uh, our apex body for this uh, regulating our technical education is uh, all india council for technical education we all know about the all india council for technical education uh, which has been uh, established by an act of parliament in 1987 for uh, developing and promoting quality technical education in the country so my dear friends i will be discussing with you this uh, briefly that uh, what are the norms and standards for sources for technical institutions as per all india council for technical education uh, we know that uh, as we have uh, different types of programs in, in engineering and technology in pharmacy in architecture so there should be some proper regulations proper norms and standards that what should be there in the institutions which is uniform for regulating the uh, programs so all india council for technical education has laid down norm and standard for achieving uniform standard throughout the country so my dear friends uh, you must be knowing that uh, what are norm and standard because every year we are to fill that uh, uh, about our institution on the uh, portal of uh, aict so majority of you may be knowing that uh, what are the various requirements uh, of uh, aict so in this session i will be sharing you sharing with you regarding the that what are the faculty norms what are the norms for uh, you are Uh, classrooms labs workshops drawing rooms what are the requirements of equipment what are the requirements of our information resources like that so my dear friends before that i would like to know you from you that uh, little bit can you share that uh, what is this norm and standards the, there are two terms norm and standard what is the difference between norm and standards uh, anyone have any idea that uh, okay then there is these are two different terms sometimes people use it interchangeably because uh, there are so many uh, definitions or uh, on the net i have seen that uh, these are two which uh, best explain that uh, what are norm and standard standard is a level of quality or achievement especially a level that is thought to be acceptable so that there is a acceptable all over the country that yes if we establish these standard then it will be acceptable to all and norm is an official standard when it is officially adopted that organizations are expected to reach organization are expected to reach means that everybody every institution should fulfill these norms for their approval from all india council for technical education right so if norm and standards are to be fulfilled by every institution so we must know that what are these norms as first i will talk about the polytechnic what are the teaching staff norms in polytechnics in polytechnics as per aict mainly there are three cadres one is lecturer second is head of department 
and then at the top is principal. Uh, can anybody share that uh, what from polytechnics? How many teachers are there in from polytechnics? Yeah, Gupta ji, yes. uh, uh, I think uh, there are around uh, uh, 65 to 70 percent uh, of the participants are uh, from the polytechnics. Uh, there are around uh, 60 participants. So I uh, I assume around uh, uh, 45, 45 participants are from the polytechnics. Okay. So that is why I want to ask uh, from uh, polytechnic teachers that uh, what are their uh, teaching load as per AICT? Do they know? Yes, my dear friends, are you aware that what I what is your teaching load? So, as per ACT norms, which uh, they have given in the uh, notification published uh, on March two thousand. Uh, Guttaji, uh, Guttaji, uh, yeah. yes. So, so many participants, uh, they are replying uh, through message box. Okay, uh, then I will open my... Just just see that message box and uh, people are replying on that one. Okay, 16 to 18 hours up to asset vessel level. Principal six, it's okay. And uh, someone is saying 15 hours, 18 hours, 16 to 18 hours. Uh, for polytechnics, uh, it is different than engineering college. For polytechnics, jo lecture ka, that load is, it is 18 hours. Uh, one Mr. Uh, Prisam Singh, he has written that 16 to 18 hours up to asset pressure level. Uh, up to for Asher professor and engineering college, it is 14 hours. So, my dear friends, for a lecturer in a polytechnic, it is 18 hours, and uh, for HOD, it is 16, uh, 16 hours, rightly said by Mr. Njit Jadav, and uh, for principal, it is 6 hours. And uh, do you know that what is the ratio of uh, uh, ratio between faculty and uh, students? Ratio, ratio for polytechnics. Because we have to calculate our requirement of teachers. So we must know that what are the ratio of teacher, faculty and students. Yes, any idea, sir? Yes, my dear friends. I think, uh, am I audible? Am I audible, my friends? Yes, yes, Kupta ji, you are audible. Okay, okay. So, my dear friends, we must know that uh, what is the ratio. Uh, earlier, it was one for 20 students. But recently it has been raised, right? Manisha, it is Manisha, one teacher. Uh, uh, Manisha, PPT is not visible. Now it is visible. Yeah, yeah okay, not solved. So now it is 21, 1 to 25. One teacher for 25 students. If someone is saying 1 to 18, no, it is not. Uh, It is it is one for twenty five students, right? Then for engineering college. In engineering college, the we have cater of assistant professor. Earlier it was they were called lecturers. Now in engineering college. They are called 
assistant professor, associate professor, professor, or HOD, and then director. So first, I would like to know that uh, what is the ratio of faculty and students in engineering college? Ratio of faculty to students in engineering college, like first polytechnics, it is one to twenty-five. Yes, one to fifteen. It was earlier. Now it has been raised to one to twenty. One to twenty. And uh, what about the teaching load of the faculty? Teaching load of system professor. Um, some uh, Mr. Monal Data, he has written that 15 hours per professor and 14 for associate professor. Yes, sir. So, as per ACT norms, it is 14 14, 14 for associate professor, 14 for associate uh, professor, and 16 for assistant professor. But there is a relaxation, a relaxation of two hours if some professor is working as HOD or dean like that. So two hours of relaxation per week is there. But otherwise, load of uh, is 16 for assistant professor, 14 for associate professor, and 14 for uh, professor, and 6 for your director or principal. So these are the uh, right. So we must know that what are the norms for our faculty. Then I come to this work schedule. What is the work schedule for a semester? In a semester, the total number of teaching days is 90. And uh, 75 days are for contact days for teaching or practical. Whatever holidays and all that, that is extra, but we must have these 75 contact days for teaching and practicals. And 15 days are for your preparation and conducting examination out of 90 days. And the total contact hours per semester must be 525. And uh, in a semester, there are total 15 weeks because when you uh, prepare the uh, slaves or curriculum, then uh, we must see that uh, as per your LTP, what will be the total hours required for teaching any subject because in one semester, there will be 15 weeks. Suppose you have uh, like three lectures, then we must have contents of at least 45 hours. Similarly, if two hours of practicals are there, then we must have practicals of 30 hours. So that is very important because on this basis, we prepare our syllabus or curriculum. Uh, do you agree with this or, or it's okay? Are you following these norms or you have some other norms? Yes, my friend. Okay. So you are following same norm because it is very, very important for all of us to know that what is our semester work due. So sometimes when we talk about this, uh, when we prepare the curriculum, Somebody says that uh, it is 13 weeks. Uh, somebody says that uh, it is 17 weeks. Uh, but actually, there should be 15 weeks and there should be total contact hours per semester of 525 hours. Then, norms for 
land requirement and building space because uh, some institutions are situated in rural some institutions are situated in urban area and some institution may be situated in your metro or mega cities so we must take care that uh, what will be the total land requirement as per aict so if i show that uh, then that will be there but before that i would like to know from you that do you have heard any that one is carpet area and uh, second is your built up area what is the difference between carpet area and built up area because when you fill the data on the portal aict portal you must have come across these two terms carpet area and built up area yes my friend any idea carpet area is the net usable floor area of an apartment net usable floor area right or you can say that carpet area is the outer wall area no carpet area is the area that can actually be covered by a carpet or the area of the building excluding the thickness of inner walls means where you can actually cover by a carpet carpet area does not include the space covered by common areas such as your lobby lift stair play area so distance between the four walls okay carpet area is the actual area you get for use in a building right uh, said by madam datta that carpet area is the usable net usable floor area of an apartment because uh, when you go to why any flat or like that then they talk about your carpet area and built up area generally they talk about your built up area because uh, built up area is measured from outside of the building wall built rightly said so your built up area is the area that comes after adding your carpet area and wall area means excluding your building walls so the wall area does it mean the surface area what the thickness of the inner walls of a building so when you go to any builder they talk about your built up area but here when you uh, prepare this uh, uh, report then generally we talk about that what will be the carpet area of your classroom or your lab or your workshop so here we will be talking about the carpet area in square meter so generally in a as per act in in an institution the carpet area is divided into one is your instruction area second is your administrative area and third is your amenity areas and fourth is your aca access and circulation area which is your 25% of your total built up area so my dear friend do you have any idea that what we cover in instruction area what is covered in instruction area yes uh, yes it includes classrooms laboratory seminar rooms and all these things okay very good so in instruction area we cover all the classrooms tutorial room drawing hall labs computer center workshop library then you are instruction learning uh, resource utilization center examination hall and auditorium all is your 
इंस्ट्रक्शन एरिया देन सेकेंड इज यूर एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव एरिया ए डी ए इन एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव एरिया दूर प्रिंसिपल ऑफिस यू आर डायरेक्टर प्रिंसिपल ऑफ डायरेक्टर ऑफिस यूर एच ओ डीज ऑफिस यूर फैकल्टीज ऑफिस आल दैट कम्स अंडर यूर एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव एरिया देन एमिनिटी एरिया वो विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट वट आर द ए एस सी टी नॉन रिगार्डिंग आल दीज थिंग्स देन इन एमिनिटी एरियाज यूर वाशरूम्स देन यूर कॉमन स्टूडेंट कॉमन सेंटर्स यूर कंटीन your playgrounds all these comes under your amenity areas then your access and circulation area it says that it should be your 25% of the built up area so total built up area in square meter is equal to ina ada ama plus 25% of this that is your ac so now we have already talked about the instruction area so what is the instruction area required for a polytechnic so because the uh, alina council of technical education it uh changes from year to year there is one approval process handbook you must have heard about this APH now it is 2020 23 here they have written that what are the various numbers required and what will be the carpet area and square meter is it visible yes sir so what should be the number of classrooms number of classrooms for an engineering Uh, for this diploma institution number of divisions one number of division is equal to 60 students is taken as one division right so number of divisions multiply by 0.75 that will be your number of rooms required and the carpet area of the room will be 66 square meter right then what should be the number of tutorial rooms it should be 1/4 of the total classroom means 25% of total classroom and the size will be carpet area of the room will be 33 square meter then laboratory size it should be 66 square meter but for the first year what is i required Should be number four number, which includes two laboratories for basic science like physics and chemistry. This I am talking about engineering technology programs. Then after first year, what is other than first year two per course per year, and the carpet area will be sixty six square meter. So workshop will be one number. If the number of students Are more than four or five vessels. You are more workshops are required. The size of the workshop will be two hundred square meter. Then they have also given that additional lab or workshops for X category courses, which are X category. That is, you are civil, electrical, mechanical, electron, meta, mining. those branches for additional labs are required then you are drawing hall one 132 square meter computer center 150 square meter seminar hall the size is 132 square meter and your library 300 square meter they have told that the number of these library or computer center or drawing hall should be increased on pro data basis as per the this data given like additional library of if 
your approved intake is more than 420 students then your additional library area will be 50 square meter per 60 students right then similarly for language uh, language lab minimum 20 computers are required and additional lab this is for five divisions if you have more than five divisions then additional lab is required for your language laboratory and x category courses i have already told mechanical production civil electrical chemical textile marine engineering aeronautical engineering and allied courses shall require additional labs or workshops and then right for computer center workshop drawing hall if your approved intake is up to 600 then only one number of computer center one workshop and one drawing hall but if it is more than 600 up to 1200 then double number is required this was regarding your polytechnic diploma institution and similarly this is for your degree program almost same number same size is required engineering and technology undergraduate programs so for these new institutions you require the same like language lab additional library x category courses And these are the same infrastructure is required on pro databases for a pooled integrator greater than 1200. So, my dear friend, these are the requirements of instruction area. Then I talk about your These are for other programs like management, pharmacy, MCA. They have covered all these things. Then second is your administrative area. For administrative area, carpet area and square meter per room like for principal, it should be 30 square meter. Boardroom, 20 square meter. Then office, all in inclusive, 150. And for this is for your technical education, uh, technical institution having one program. But if they have more than one program, then 300 square meter. Then cabins for head of department and departmental office that is 20 square meter. Faculty room 5 square meter. Then central store may. Uh, maintenance, security, housekeeping, then pantry for staff, examination, uh, control office, placement office, all these are the size of the rooms. Number of rooms are required and total numbers required. Uh, all has been given in the administrative area. Excuse me. Uh, yes, sir. Sir. Uh... Sir, uh, is there any guidelines that the faculty room should be differentiated based on the designation for associate, professor, professor and assistant level? Actually, sir, in this, uh, they have not uh, given any differentiation, but generally they have said that uh, carpet area per, uh, per, uh, per room should be 5 square meter. So, that is minimum. That is minimum. Okay, so uh, there is no specific guideline that the room of professor should be larger than assistant, something like that. Uh, generally, it is there, but uh, I have not found uh, in this uh, norms. Generally, it is there. Of course, I agree with you that uh, that should be there, that uh, for professor and associate professor, there should be bigger rooms. But uh, here, they have not uh, given like uh, that. Have you come across any such uh, uh, room size? 
no sir actually uh, during one meeting uh, at nit kurchitra i uh, i listen that that uh, there should be some difference in in the room sizes of uh, assistant associate and professor that's why i am asking sir i have not uh, come across uh, for this that uh, there should be any uh, different size but uh, i do agree that uh, generally these are the sir actually these are the minimum sizes this is okay. not that maximum size these are the minimum sizes okay okay depending upon the availability of the space you can have even uh, 20 square meter or 30 square meter or 10 square meter that is uh, you can have but these are the minimum requirements as per aict okay okay thank you sir so then these are the minimum uh, requirements similarly for your amenity areas because uh, in uh, now the strength of our uh, girl students are increasing day and day 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 by day so we must have a, a proper washrooms for uh, ladies or uh, girls also so these are the minimum sizes uh, these are the minimum sizes which have more than one program like toilets ladies and gents 350 square meter boys common room 150 square meter girls common room 100 square meter earlier when we were studying Uh, there was not uh, like uh, this, uh, but now it is uh, mandatory for every institution to have this uh, girls' common room also. Then your cafeteria, stationery and store, uh, reprography, first aid, uh, sick room, principal's quarter, guest room, sports, auditorium, boys' hostel, and girls' hostel. This should be adequate in number. So these are the minimum sizes. For your uh, different amenities. Similarly, for circulation area, they have given that uh, AC of 25% of instruction area, administrative area, and amenity areas is desired, covering common walkways, staircases, and entrance lobby. So there should be proper open space also available in the institutions. So these are the some of the uh, guidelines uh, given by. ACT, but these are the just minimum. You can have uh, bigger than this also. Then, what should be the norm and standards for equipment? Because you may be having very good, beautiful buildings, but you, if you do not have, if we do not have proper equipment, equip proper instruments in our labs and workshops, then I think uh, uh, we know that uh, students are not uh, properly get skills which are required as per the program. So, what are the minimum requirements that i will discuss uh, just with you that uh, uh, actually there many types of uh, experiments are there like there may be some uh, there may be uh, some programs where type of skills to develop is much more than some other program like library program or like you can have a, a business uh, programs there you do not have much equipment but like civil electrical mechanical we want to build skills in the students so it depends that uh, what what type of skills we want to develop in the students then secondly what will be the utilization of the equipment and the cost consideration sometimes there are some equipments which are just used one time in whole year and the cost is very high so whether 
those groupment should be purchased or not or what should be the grouping of students like in our institution generally we give equipment to around two three uh, two to four students but there are some institution like indo swiss training center at chandigarh they have every equipment per student every student is given individual so depending upon the grouping of the students we are to procure the equipment so uh, generally the group size for sending the students for these uh, experiments should not be more than 20 because generally we see that uh, in new institution whole full class of 60 students is sent to the labs or workshops and thus just the students are standing there and just observing that one teacher or one technician they are performing the experiment and the students are just observing that is why our students lack in the skill so my dear friend maximum students in a group for this uh, practical should not be uh, more than 20 and uh, even in some good institution the batch is uh, of 15 students so if you have experiment which involve verification of laws principles and theories there should not be more than two students and for basic workshops and manufacturing skills not more than two students and if there is some a uh, field measurement uh, fabrication or reaction type uh, uh, practical jar are there then not more than five students should be uh, given that exercise so it depends upon uh, from institution to institution and the availability of the equipments or the instruments then as we have already discussed that the uh, size of laboratory should be 66 square meter and the uh, carpet area for workshop it should be 200 square meter and uh, there are some courses like civil electrical mechanical uh, for those courses additional labs are required that is 200 square meter so these are the different uh, requirements uh, as per aict because uh, in the a uh, first year they have said that a uh, uh, four labs are required including two for your applied sciences and then two labs per course per year should be added then requirements of computers uh we all know that uh, now every institution have a sufficient number of uh, your pcs uh, as per act requirements uh, we should have a, a minimum that is uh, one pc for uh, six students whether it is polytechnic or uh, degree institution and uh, we must have some legal systems uh, legal system softwares must be minimum 3 then legal application software 20 and uh, your lan and internet all the pcs and you are uh, then uh, mail server and client uh, that is desirable and must have some colored printer because uh, now uh, these are the also requirement that uh, there should be some colored printer uh, that is uh, 5% of the total number of pcs so at least one printer to be a one sized color printer or plotter then this is the minimum internet speed i think uh, no institution nowadays uh, uh, facing this difficulty because uh, so many uh, schemes are there where under which they can get this uh, internet uh, installed in their institution so one gigabits per second is if you have uh, approved intake more than 900 so 
so these are the these are the minimum requirements you can have more than this also but these are the minimum requirements which are required by the uh, required by the institution to be fulfilled then uh, they have also said that for megabit per second wi-fi connectivity should be also provided for five force course so that uh, students can get uh, that uh, connectivity from uh, any corner from the institution like uh, NITPLT our uh, campus is fully uh, that uh, we have wi-fi connectivity even in our residences we have uh, wi-fi uh, connectivity if uh, it is available you can also think of this then that uh, we have already discussed and one more thing that uh, earlier uh, there used to be one common uh, computer center but because in nowadays every department has some uh, application of uh, uh, computers so every department shall have separate computer lab with at least 20 computers and the a separate centralized computer lab with at least 100 computers that is the uh, requirement for your uh, uh, computer labs then one is your language lab how many institutions uh, have uh, this language lab earlier it was not there uh, in the old institution but uh, i think that uh, now every institution uh, have established uh, this uh, language lab and because of employers or industry comes for your uh, campus placement or interviewing the, the students then they see that our students are not uh, good in communication skills they lack in communication so it has been it has been made mandatory for every institution to have uh, this language lab so that students can go there and have some practice on the languages because uh, there are different uh, software available uh, where you can record your uh, voice and then listen that uh, how you speak what is your uh, shortcomings how you can improve that uh, so all type of uh, that uh, softwares uh, are available in the this language lab uh, may I know that uh, how many institutions have this uh, language lab in their institutions? We do have it, sir. Majority of okay. I think uh, uh, any institution which who do not have this language lab, I will ask other way. Any institution which do not have this language lab. So I suppose that uh, every institution is uh, having your this uh, language lab because uh, uh, without this, uh, the students uh, uh, are not equipped with the proper communication. So as per this uh, uh, requirement, there should be 25 computers for every 1000 students and additional lab uh, should be established if uh, we have more than 1000 students so this is uh, all about uh, the requirements uh, from uh, uh, all india council for technical education uh, actually uh, every year aict uh, publish new approval process handbook now these uh, have been given by as per uh, aph uh, 2022-23. So, whenever you are to prepare any proposal or you are to fill the data on the portal of ACT, it should be the as per the latest APH. So, if uh, that was uh, all about this uh, uh, ACT normal.